Twinkle, twinkle, little star, what a miracle you are. When I look at you, that's what I see. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, I hope there are miracles for me. Little Tree lived many, many years ago in a land quite distant from our own. Like every other tree, he sprouted from a tiny seed and began to grow. Little Tree could hardly wait until he was strong enough to push his head out of the ground where he could see the world about him. So he rested and gathered his strength for the big day. He drank all the fresh rainwater he could hold and sent his roots down as far as he could to get a good solid foothold in the earth. One day, Little Tree felt that he could make it, so he gave himself a mighty push, and then he shot up out of the ground. It was so easy, it surprised him. He, he looked, looked around. around. Little Tree was growing on top of a hill. In a distance, he could see a small town, and close by was a road running into the town. He was busy looking at everything around him, when all of a sudden he was startled by a voice. It seemed to come from above. Hello there, little tree. I've been wondering when you would pop out of the ground. I could see the dirt moving around, and I knew you were trying to push through. Little tree was awed by the size of his neighbor. He never dreamed that a tree could grow so tall. Wow, you must be a thousand feet tall. No, not quite. I figure I'm only about 40 feet, but I guess that is high enough. I'm good and strong, and that's what really counts. I hope I will be as good and strong as you are when I grow up. You will be. Just get lots of sunshine and spread your roots down deep to get plenty of nourishment from the earth. Oh, I will. I'll do anything you say, because I want to go up to be just like you. Well, that's fine. I'll teach you everything I know and do everything I can to help you get started. There's a lot you got to learn about living. Okay. Stick close to me and I'll lend a helping hand. That's great. We'll be like two stumps in a bog, two bumps on a log, because we're two of a kind. Two different sizes of the same design. I'm just a small sprout, but I'm going to be going. That's right. I hope that someday I'm good and strong like you. Oh, you will be. I'll be a chip off the old block, a stick off the old stock, because we're two of a kind. Two different sizes of the same design. Okay. Little tree, you should begin to keep a record of your growth, kind of like a diary, like all trees in the world do. But how? Well, the mark you make around your trunk will remain there year after year. And as you grow, the marks will form rings. Other trees and even some people can read these marks, almost like reading a book and from them, they can learn all about us. Wow, I better get started right away. Little Tree could see that he had a lot to learn about the business of growing up. I am very small now, but I'm gonna grow. Someday I'll be tall and strong from head to toe. out to the skies I must learn and listen so I will become wise Wisdom Wisdom Make me strong Bring me joy when birds have lost their song Wisdom Wisdom I love you more than gold
The days passed and became weeks as Little Tree continued to grow and learn. One night while he was sleeping, a cloudburst of rain fell over the land. Water spilled over the hilltop as if dumped from giant buckets. Little Tree awoke with a start and was seized with panic. He could feel himself being torn from the earth by the rushing waters. He was still quite young, and his roots were not deep enough or strong enough to stand the pulling and the pushing of the currents which swirled around him. Little Tree called frantically to his friend. Help! Help! Glen Tree, please help me! But the big tree was sleeping. He enjoyed a good rainstorm, for he was big and strong. And the wind and rain were like a lullaby to him. Bellowing gusts of wind came over the hill and bent Little Tree almost to the ground. As he straightened up, he shouted once more with all his might. Help! This time, his neighbor heard and looked down to see what was troubling his little friend. He recognized the danger at once. With two of his big leafy arms, he quickly formed a canopy over Little Tree and protected him from the driving rain, which had been loosening all the dirt around his little roots. When he finally caught his breath, Little Tree sighed with relief. Boy, that was a close one. Yes, I thought you were a goner for sure. Why, you turned as white as a birch tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you were here. Me too. That was really too close. But now I know I can make it with you as my friend. We are the best of friends. Yep, forever and ever. Little Tree and his friend talked into the night. The storm finally passed, and the moon shone through the clouds once again. Through the years, Little Tree developed into a beautiful tree. Though he really wasn't such a little tree anymore, his friends still called him Little Tree, and the name seemed to stick. As he grew, Little Tree began to think more and more of what might happen to him when he reached the age when he would be of value as lumber. His big companion often talked about what he would like to become. His dream was to be made into an ox cart and travel around the country driven by a team of oxen. Little Tree wasn't so sure he wanted to be cut down and made into anything. Why can't we just stay here where we are? Maybe we will. You see, I believe that our Creator made everything here on Earth for some useful purpose. We can't always tell what that purpose is. Now you and I, maybe we were just meant to grow here and furnish a nice shady resting place for men traveling along the road. Or maybe we will be cut down and made into something one day. But I do know that we have some purpose for being here. Little Tree was still not convinced that everything served a useful purpose. I'd sure like to know all these pesky little bugs that always bother us are good for. They bother us, but look at all the meals they furnish our friends the birds. We may be bugged and bitten by ticks and gnats and fleas, but remember, they're delicious to the bird community. We're his creation, quite the sensation, when you remember that we came from God's imagination. He has a purpose for everything, from the bugs and the bees, the flowers and the trees, and the birdies that like to sing. Big Tree, you know everything. Sometime later, a man with a saw came to examine Big Tree closely. The man walked all around him and looked at him from all sides. He saw how big and strong Big Tree was. It made Little Tree proud and happy that the man recognized Big Tree's superior qualities. And Big Tree was wildly happy. At last, at last, I'm going to be made into something. Oh, I hope it's an ox cart. Little Tree was sad at the thought of losing his friend and neighbor, but Big Tree was so happy that Little Tree soon felt himself sharing his enthusiasm. It wasn't long before Big Tree was cut down and hauled away. And Little Tree was left alone on the hilltop. He looked over at the remaining stump and examined the rings. Big Tree had kept his diary well. There was his complete life's history, down to the last detail. For years after that, Little Tree spent many happy hours reading the story left in the stump of his companion. One unforgettable night, Little Tree was roused from his sleep by a strange noise. It seemed that he could hear singing, and yet it was singing like he had never heard before. It was wonderful. Little Tree stirred his leaves to look about. In the distance, he saw a star, shining more brightly than any he had ever seen. It seemed to cast a light down on one small village some distance away. Little Tree had heard people speak of the village. It was called Bethlehem. Before long, men and women began traveling the road in front of Little Tree, their eyes always watching the star. 
and Little Tree could sense an odd but wonderful calm which seemed to settle over the land. Haven't you heard, haven't you heard, a little baby's cry, a little baby's cry. Haven't you seen, haven't you seen, the star up in the sky, the star up in the sky. The star will point the way to the baby born today. Oh, hear the angels sing. The star will point the way to a manger full of hay, where we will find the king. Haven't you heard the music in the night, the music in the night? Haven't you seen the angels in the light, the angels in the light? The star will point the way to the baby born today. Oh, hear the angels sing. The star will point the way to a manger full of hay, where we will find the king. The star will point the way to a manger full of hay, where we will find the King. Little Tree didn't understand what was happening this strange night, yet there was a restful peace inside him that said that all was right with the world. As the years went by, Little Tree kept a close watch over every ox cart that passed, hoping to see one made from the wood of his old friend. Every once in a while, Little Tree would get a longing to be made into something himself. But as the years went by, men seemed quite content to let Little Tree continue his duties as a shade tree. One day, a small group of men stopped to eat in the shade of his branches. Little Tree was fascinated by one of the travelers. The man had the most kind and gentle face he had ever seen. His quiet eyes seemed to pass a blessing on everything on which he looked. And of all the hundreds that had stopped to rest there, this man was the first to really look at Little Tree and remark on what a beautiful tree he was. Little Tree was deeply touched by his words. He knew that he would never forget the man with the kind face. His look was like a thousand words that whispered to my empty heart the kindest things I'd ever heard as if he'd known me from the start. I saw the sunshine through his eyes It melted me like winter snow I saw the sunshine through his eyes I'll never let it go I saw the sunshine through his eyes I'll never let it go One evening, Little Tree noticed the sun seemed to disappear very suddenly. A great wind rose quickly and swooshed through his leaves and branches, warning the birds to take cover. This looks like a real rainstorm. I just hope it doesn't blow so hard it keeps me awake all night. Soon the sky was completely darkened, as thunder and lightning boomed their way from cloud to cloud. Little Tree tried to settle himself for the night. He usually liked to sleep through a good rain, but this one was such a storm that he would no more than doze off when he would be awakened again by the thunder and the wind. Suddenly, at the height of the storm, a streak of lightning seared its way from a cloud and struck Little Tree with a mighty crash. His trunk was split almost in two by the blast, and he felt the burn to the very tips of his roots. Little Tree was stunned for several minutes. When he was able to move again, it took all his strength to try to hold himself together to last out the storm. He knew he could do nothing to repair the damage until morning. He was still too weak from the blow. At last, the night passed, and the sun dawned over a clear sky. All the earth was fresh and glistening. It was a lovely morning, but Little Tree couldn't enjoy it. He looked at himself in misery. The burn still ached through him, 
and his trunk was split by a charred black hole. He knew he would never be able to mend it alone. If only someone would find my trunk with a rope or something to close this terrible gap. I just know it would heal. Still, no one offered to help. His leaves began to wither and drop away until his once beautiful foliage was almost completely gone. People no longer paused to rest beneath his branches, where he could not provide that shade as he once did. As the months passed, he found himself giving up all hope of ever recovering in his deep loneliness and pain. Little Tree spent many restless nights looking up at the sky, hoping for a miracle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, what a miracle you are. When I look at you, that's what I see. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, I hope there are miracles for me. I've heard many others say, good things come to those who wait, and I'm waiting patiently to see someone who will come my way, holding any miracles for me. sunset, Little True was preparing to settle down to another night of uneasy sleep when he noticed a man approaching. Even in the twilight, he recognized the man at once. It was the traveler with the kind face and the quiet manner who admired him that day so long ago. Little True was delighted to have company, but he was sad that the man should see him now, so weak and broken. The stranger paused to look at the tree. Little True was imagining that he was remembering how beautiful he was when they last met. Little Tree watched his visitor closely. He seemed weary and troubled. The man rested for a time. Then did something that Little Tree thought very strange. The traveler rose to his knees, turned his face towards heaven, and closed his eyes as if he was sleeping. Yet Little Tree knew he was not sleeping, so he continued to watch him, puzzled. A few hours before dawn, the man got to his feet. Oddly, he seemed refreshed, even though he had not slept. Then, unexpectedly, the stranger looked again at Little Tree and placed his hands gently on the tree's trunk. For the first time in months, Little Tree felt completely relaxed. He fell into a sound sleep as the man walked toward the town. Little Tree awoke with a start. One look at the sun told him he had overslept, for it was mid-morning. A great babble of voices brought his attention to the road. There was a large gathering of people around him. All of them were pointing at him and talking excitedly among themselves. Little Tree was baffled. He looked at himself quickly to learn why he was such a curiosity. Then he looked again. It was unbelievable. He looked at himself a third time. It was true. He was exactly the same as he had been in the beautiful days before that awful storm. Little Tree heard the people about him saying, it's a miracle. And he agreed. Indeed, it was a miracle. When they've heard good news 
And when the sun's shining down, who can snooze? Who wouldn't sing out a melody if they were bound and now they're free? Who can be cool when their heart's on fire? Or settle down when their hopes are higher? And who can walk when they want to fly? Oh, you can bet it isn't I. I want to shout. I want to cheer about the joy that fills my soul. I want to sing and let him hear that he has made me whole. I want the world to know who doesn't dance when their dream comes true. Never smiles when the sky's turning blue. Who wouldn't leap and laugh out loud if they were lost and now they're found? Who can be cool when their heart's on fire? Or settle down when their hopes are higher? And who can walk when they want to fly? Well, you can bet it isn't I. I want to shout. I want to cheer about the joy that fills my soul. I want to sing and let him hear that he has made me whole. I want the world to know. I want to laugh, I want to cry, I want to write it in the sky, I want to sing eternally. God is good to me. I want to shout. Yay! I want to cheer about the joy that fills my soul. I want to sing and let him hear that he has made me whole. I want the world to know. And so, once again, Little Tree became the popular landmark on the hilltop, with travelers on the roadside always stopping to rest in his shade. The birds nested in his branches, and small animals played about his trunk. Little Tree was happy again. Yet in spite of his own happiness, there was a strange tension in the air which told him that all was not well throughout the land. He would often see groups of men arguing furiously among themselves. How foolish men are sometimes. Why can't everybody be happy as I am, just enjoying life and glad to be alive? Then one day, the man with the saw stopped before Little Tree. His face was hard and unsmiling, but Little Tree didn't notice, for he was too excited. At last, he was to be made into something. Wow, I wonder what I'll be. A house, or a cart, or maybe a great palace. The man looked at Little Tree from all sides. He began to work. But instead of setting his saw at the trunk as Little Tree thought he would, the man reached into his branches and sawed off one of the biggest limbs. Little Tree was bewildered. He couldn't imagine what the man would do with just one limb. Now I suppose I will never know what he's going to do with my big branch. But a few days later, Little Tree saw a procession coming along the road toward his hill. There were soldiers and men and women. He watched them closely as they approached the crest of the hill. As they drew near, he was able to see them all plainly. The bark about his trunk stiffened. One glance told him what the man had done with the limb. It's a cross. My branch was made into a cross. And there, struggling to carry the heavy cross, was the man with the kind face. Little Tree could hardly believe his eyes. He saw the man stumble and fall time after time under the weight of the cross, but no one offered to help him. Instead, they threw stones and made fun of him. Little Tree turned his eyes away. He couldn't stand to watch any longer. But after a while, he had to turn and look again to see what the crowd had done to the man. By then, the procession had reached the top of the neighboring hill. There, Little Tree saw the people set up three crosses, and on one of them, they nailed the man with the kind face, the man called Jesus. Why, what could he have possibly done to deserve this? All he did was save my life. All he did was be my friend. And then meant my broken heart So that I could smile again Now they've taken him away And I just can't understand Why they've treated him this way No, they must not know this man No, they must not know this man Called Jesus 
He's so gentle, he's so kind. What could he be guilty of? Oh, how could it be a crime that he gave all his love? Now the man who saved my life has been nailed upon a cross and the joy that he made mine without him will all be lost no they must not know this man called jesus if they'd known him like i do if they'd felt his gentle touch if they'd only see the love in his eyes well i hope someday they will then like me they'll understand what it is to love this man called jesus will the morning ever come and the night be left behind jesus is the shine now i feel just like the sky when the rain begins to start i can't stop these tears i cry from the pain that's in my heart no they must not know this man called jesus if they'd known him like i do if they'd felt his gentle touch, if they'd only see the love in his eyes. Well, I hope someday they will, then like me they'll understand what it is to love this man called Jesus. Jesus. Suddenly the bright daylight turned to darkness as thunder echoed over the hills and lightning angrily flashed through the black clouds. Little Tree knew that this must be the ugliest day in the world's history. For the first time in all his life, Little Tree cried. He cried until all his leaves were wet from the tears. Soon all the trees in the world heard what had happened, and they cried too, for they all knew of the wonderful thing the man had done for Little Tree. The willow tree shed such great tears that its leaves drooped to the ground where they've stayed even to this very day. For three whole days not a bird sang, not a leaf stirred. It was as if the whole earth had died. But on the morning of the third day, ah, this day was different. The sun has risen high, his glory crowns the day, the shadows fade away. Risen high, 
this day was different, all right, and little she could feel it. The birds were singing, and the sunshine was warm. Little she was beside himself. He was so happy. He waved his branches with joy and shouted, He lived! He lived! taught his followers for many days. And then one day, as he was speaking, he began to rise gently from the earth, up into the clouds. Little Tree turned all his leaves upward to watch this amazing sight. Suddenly he had the feeling the man was leaving, never to return, and he cried out after him. Please, please, please don't go. The man looked down at him and said, Keep watch, Little Tree, for some day I will come back. And with that, he drifted further upward toward the sun, until he seemed to be lifted into heaven itself. Little Tree did keep watch. Each day he would turn all his leaves toward the sun and follow it closely from dawn till sunset. Soon all the other trees had heard what happened, and they too turned their leaves upward, keeping watch with Little Tree. And so it is, even to this day, every tree in the whole world turns its leaves upward toward the sun, keeping watch as Little Tree first did centuries ago. You know, little ones, that we're all faced with decisions that we have to make in this life, from when we were first born until you're as old as I am. You see, God looks at our decisions, and he is concerned about our decisions. You know, when we go against our parents, or we do something that is wrong, that is considered a sin as far as God is concerned. You see, God is a just God. He wants us all to be pure before him. So in heaven, Jesus Christ came down. A God came down to us in the shape of a man, a man just like you and I, to break that bond of sin. You see, it's like a chain. Once one link is broke, we find that the chain is useless. That's the way we are. We're useless before God because God said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you see, also he said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. So with that, you know, the sins that we have committed have to be paid for, and that's what Jesus came for, to get the sins out of our lives and to be cleansed requires the blood of Jesus out upon our lives. It is so simple, little ones. It's like A, B, C. A, we must admit and confess that we have sinned and done wrong. And B, we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he can purify us of those sins. And finally, C, that we commit our lives to him. I would just like to pray now with you and just bow your heads and just say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed. Oh, please forgive me. And I believe, Lord, that you will cleanse me whole and make me pure before you. And I take my life and I commit it to you that you might have your will and your way in my life, that I might have a place in heaven to reside with you forever and ever. Oh God, we just thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Now the impossible is true. He'll mend a heart that's torn in two. If you believe with all your might, your dreams will shine. Jesus is that miracle